welcome back to my channel. I've already done my base. I'm going to do another story time because the last one seemed to be su successful, sorry. I've had so many of you message me privately and kind of tell me how you guys, how much you guys enjoyed it, how much you learned from it and how inspiring you found it. So I thought, let me maybe talk about something else that might not be as relatable to everybody, but for those going through this, maybe this might help. So today I'm going to talk about how I got through my divorce. So I've done my base already. I'm just gonna do my eye makeup. The last video was really, really long. So I'm gonna try and keep this as to the point as possible. Um, so, well, I got married at 29. Um, and I basically <laughs> got divorced four months later. Well. We got separated four months later. The divorce was messy, it was ugly. It was like, it took two years, cost me a bomb. I was in debt. I was just, it was just the most awful time. Anyway, I'm not gonna talk about what happened, uh, who was at fault, and you know, I'm not gonna talk about any of that. Different people have different reasons, and the last thing I wanna do is drag my ex-husband through anything, and on top of that, um, I mean, that would be disrespectful towards him and his, family but also disrespectful towards my husband now and my in-laws i kind of feel like it's so unnecessary it was exactly 10 years ago by the way this year marks 10 years of me being divorced anyway forget about that but let's just say my initial reaction when we were discussing divorce was that i absolutely did not want it and my main reason for not wanting it is not because oh my god i was so in love with him and i wanted to stay with him it was Society. I was worried about what other people were going to think. So my initial reaction was just like, uh, no, we're going to make this work. First of all, we've spent so much money on this wedding and we live together and, you know, four months. Like for me, it was just a little bit like, what the hell? And when obviously the families found out, obviously the families were all against it and they were kind of just like, no, you're not getting divorced. You must be kidding. Um, and bear in mind, this was 10 years ago. Okay. So I was already somebody that people knew on social media. It was the year that people kind of got to know me a little bit more in the sense that it's the first time I worked with like a celebrity. So a lot more people knew me around the world. I don't even remember how many followers I had at the time, but I think it was like 10,000 maybe. And which was a big deal for then, you know? And so, so many people knew about me. So many people started talking about my divorce and stuff like that, in it, you know, after. But the initial thing was, I was just like, shit, like, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what, what was gonna happen. So obviously my parents and his parents were like, absolutely no, initially. And then my parents decided to discuss it with their siblings. And again, everyone was kind of just like, don't let them get divorced, like what the hell, like, you know. And naturally they blamed it on me. Naturally it was just like, oh my God, like why does Vidya have to be such a rebel? Or why can't she just shut up and put up with it and you know. And you won't believe it, it was my dad. My dad was probably the only guy that from the get-go was kind of just like, I'm sorry, but I'm not sending my daughter to this. And I'm not letting my daughter live like this. And I think that support alone helped me so, so, so much. But then having everyone else, which I don't blame them for now. Obviously, at the time, I was kind of just like, what the hell, man? Um, why is no one like on my side? Like, why are people kind of forcing me to just shut up, be silent, and just stay in this and stuff? Like, why? And you know, because uh, like nobody in my family at the time had ever gotten divorced, or my parents didn't personally know anybody that got divorced, so they didn't know what was going to happen. They weren't. They didn't know what was going to happen to me. That what was. The, what the future was going to tell so it was kind of like a really really tricky situation for them which again now i don't blame them for but at the time i was kind of just like what's wrong with you like like be on my side like you know what what's going on and stuff anyway um so eventually i think the more i started openly talking about it and i'm not just talking to family and friends um this is one of the reasons I love my cousins, by the way. When initially this talk came about, I called one of my youngest cousins, um, a boy, you know, Jenin, I love you. Um, he was 18 at the time, not even. I think he was like maybe 17, I don't know. But I called him first and I was kind of like, I'm super close to his parents, um, who's my dad's older brother. No, sorry, my dad's younger brother. Um, 
and I basically talked to them and was kind of just like, hey, can you like explain this to my parents? Because I don't think my parents know what this means. I don't know. I don't think they know what divorce means and I don't think they're going to handle it very well. Um, so I spoke to my cousin who then talked to my uncle. Then my uncle called me. And you won't believe this. This was all happening while I was doing a shoot. Uh, two songs with Nayanthala, okay? This was like a nine-day shoot. We were traveling. I was sitting in the back of the coach. And I'm telling you, I was like shaking, crying. And I was like, what the hell? Why is this happening now? And my Lime production producer, I think at the time, she gave me a day off. She told me to go and stay in the hotel. Because um, obviously she knew that my mind mindset was somewhere else it was a really tough time for me by the way but i still tried to be as professional as i could and i stuck out those nine days even though i was literally going through a divorce basically but anyway that aside um and then my uncle called my dad and was just kind of like you know easing him into that sort of conversation and then it just kind of went to this thing where we were openly constantly sitting down and having this conversation having my cousins and my sister who were obviously supporting me constantly speak to my parents or the other uncles and aunts and be like hey you know i i just needed these hype people and that's what i had with all these people in my life um sorry i'm doing my eyeliner and i think that them explaining things to people um, made it so much easier for me because then I didn't need to do that constantly because it was it was triggering it was upsetting I was just like oh my god I don't want to repeat myself and I hate that question of like oh but why didn't you say something sooner and it's just like no you you know I feel like it this could be in any other community of course and I respect that but I'm just saying as a Tamil girl the only thing I knew at the time is just like, you just shut up and take it. And you don't, you know, you don't, you basically try and do anything and everything not to embarrass your parents. And for me, it was kind of just like, I was battling all these thoughts. I should have, now that I know everything that's happened, yeah, I should have. And this is why I'm doing this video, because if any of you feel like, you know, you are in some kind of marriage where you're you know so unhappy and things are so bad i'm not saying go get divorced i'm just saying openly talk about it talk about it with your loved ones talk about it with people you really trust talk about it with your parents talk about it with your siblings your cousins your best friends like talk about it with other people to get different people's perspective and opinions and things like that to just kind of discuss because maybe it is something that you can resolve with your husband. Maybe it is something that you both can sit down and be like, okay, this is what's going wrong. Can we fix this? You know, can we work on this and stuff like, do you know what I mean? Rather than like, oh, I don't like you, so I'm leaving you. You know, um, I'm sure nobody does that, but I'm just saying, please don't think anybody watching this, that that's what I'm trying to, like, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm just saying communication is really, really important. Whether it's with your husband, whether it's with basically anyone, no one's going to ever be able to predict, um, you know what's going on in your life and sometimes I feel like instead of actually especially when you see the red flags but you still go ahead and get married to that person because you're so worried about your family and you're so worried about what people will say if you cancel the wedding um, I feel like it's worse when you spend all that money and you do this really big wedding and then, and then you decide you're going to get divorced. And it's almost just like, but you saw the red flags at the beginning. Why not, you know? Yeah, so that that's a regret that I have. But hey, um, I know now and I've learned that I'm not going to put up with things in life. Because you know what? Life is too short. And now that it's been 10 years, nobody talks about it. It's not even a thing. And it like literally, it's not even a topic of discussion ever, ever and stuff, right? So I always think you need to always think of the future and you always need to think of like like yeah just your life like imagine you're just like oh yeah i'll put up with this i'll put up with this and then before you know it the years go by the years go by and then like 10 years have gone by and you might even have kids together or something and then you're you're just sitting there and you're just like what do i do but you know what even then life is 
still too short and it's still not too late so i feel like if you, if there is if there are problems this it needs to be addressed and if it if you're Husband is not the person you can talk to. You have to be able to go to your parents or your friends or your cousins and stuff. I, I get that not everybody has that sort of support system. I really do. I get that. Um, but then there are so many other ways. If, if obviously you're going through something a lot more serious, you know, like domestic abuse or, you know, anything like really bad, I would say there are so many helplines and so much support that you can get. Um, and women shelters and it's i'm not just talking about the uk you can get women shelters anywhere in the world like you know you just need to research and find out and have maybe the call the number dialed you know and save it under i don't know a, a cousin's or a relative's name so that nobody finds out and you know you can call that number if something's gone down and you have nowhere else to go and at least you have a women's shelter to go to and stuff um you know i've not been in that situation however i have um you know worked alongside charities that kind of really support um women shelters and things like that so i do understand um to an extent what women would be going through if that's the the solution that they take and yeah it, it can be a hard hard place to be i guess and that's why i think communication like i said if you have people to talk to please 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 talk to them so yeah so anyway i was getting divorced um eventually people started realizing through my social media that i'm even though i've never posted um my ex-husband much which is one of the reasons i hate and will never post my husband now um but you know it helps that he doesn't have social media and he doesn't want to be on social media my parents don't want to my sister doesn't want to um and that's their choice and and i respect that like whenever i post anyone okay and i'm talking about anyone on my social media i always ask them before i post i'm like is it okay that i post the story of all of us together is that okay you know and do you want me to tag you do you not want me to tag you i do that because i understand that not everyone is on social media and not everyone likes to be on social media okay so that's really really important but anyway so people were starting to realize because i wasn't wearing my ring anymore and yeah like all the social media detectives were basically like hey like what's going on like you know and they obviously noticed that i wasn't living in the other house anymore i was at my parents back at my parents so slowly by slowly people started asking questions and i just wasn't ready to talk about it that's another thing man being pushed into explaining or talking about like you know what happened or why or are you divorced and stuff like you kind of want to do it when you're ready because you're already going through so much you're having to deal with the family the friends like everyone you know asking questions um being curious like oh what happened why and you're just like oh my god like everyone just badly wants to gossip about you basically and so you will not believe it i used to get booked by clients um so not brides at that time i was still kind of just doing a lot of guest makeup and people would book me get me to their house to do their makeup and towards the middle or the end of that um makeup session they would literally ask me why i'm getting divorced um, or they will start saying things like, oh, I heard this rumor. Is it true? And you can imagine, I'm just like, so this is why you booked me. And that was really hard to accept, even though, yeah, I was getting paid. But I'm just like, oh my God, do people are that invested or people are that interested. It was, it was actually quite crazy. Um, but yeah, anyway, so like i was really really worried that people weren't going to book me for weddings because i thought oh my god are they going to think i'm like some bad omen or are they going to think that i shouldn't be getting somebody ready on their special day am i going to advise the bride something else or something you know so that was like my biggest biggest worry that i wasn't going to be able to work anymore or something but luckily that didn't happen well like i said a lot of people were very curious they were booking me because they were trying to find out about my divorce so maybe win-win but um yeah so that kind of went on for a long time anyway while the divorce was happening you know my mom was like oh like you know don't you want to get to know somebody else like you know my parents didn't pressure me by the way but they were obviously concerned because they were like oh my god you know is she going to meet anybody else is it going to happen that's always every Tamil parents worry i think probably every parents but 
just kind of thinking, is she going to be lonely? Is she going to be like, I don't know, a spinster or something? Like, you know, these are the things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, even if I turned around and said to my parents, I don't want to get married. I just want to be single for the rest of my life and I'm good. I really do think and really do believe that my parents would have accepted that and they would have been like, whatever makes you happy. You know, they saw what I went through and the first thing I also did, I mean, as you guys probably from my last storyline would have, um, story time, storyline, story time, would have realized that, um, or understood that I did go through depression. And so my parents were really worried that I might hit the low again. Cause I, I unfortunately did put my parents through a lot when I was going through my depression. So, um, they basically took all the locks away from all the rooms. They basically got rid of any sharp knives in the house. Um, cause they were so scared that I was going to do something to myself. And even if I woke up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, cause my room was downstairs, my sister or like, you know, my mom would be like, in there, are you okay? Do you need anything? Because they thought, I don't know, like I might do something to myself. And you know, and I said to myself, I don't want to put my parents through this as well. Not that I was thinking anything, but I just thought to myself, you know what? I need to go help myself because I do not want to get to know the next person and have that baggage of what I just went to went through. I don't want to have bitterness. I don't want to have anger. I don't want to have any of those, you know. So I immediately found a private therapist. I didn't even bother, you know, getting myself onto the waiting list because I knew in that moment... I desperately needed it and even though I didn't really have the money even though I was paying so much money for the divorce and stuff I was like you know what instead of buying makeup or any of the other nice things that I like I was just like let me just spend money on a therapist and that's what I did I went weekly for about six months just to talk about my divorce and that entire six months helped me so much and I actually walked out of it completely saying I hope my ex-husband's happy and people around me were just like really and I'm like yeah I, I want him to be happy I hope he's happy and you know I hope um we all end up walking away you know with something like you know I want us to be happy I want everyone to move on and blah 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 like I was I, I swear I'm I'm not even joking like I wasn't bitter anymore I wasn't and that was really important to me and so after that I was able to really kind of be like okay let me just focus myself on work it's the first time I started going gym that really helped um I was losing weight I was kind of like but in, in a healthy way like I was working out I was like loving going to the gym I was going four or five times a week I was just like loving it but after a while I was kind of like I would like to date again you won't believe it it was really 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 hard during those two years i grew so much on social media um so many people started getting to know me like as in they were like oh this is like makeup artist slash influencer mm, and you won't believe it i felt like guys just ran away from me because they were like nah i don't want to date an influencer or their thinking at the time was just like oh i don't want to be dating a girl that everyone looks at or you know they, they there was like all these things i think i think I'm, I'm making assumptions nobody said this to me but i think so because for two years man like i found it so hard to go on dates i did i tried but then it was kind of just like nothing came of it and i was you know after a while i was just like oh my god and i remember the day that i basically that my now husband reached out to me i will never forget that day so i was at a bridal job in glasgow or cardiff or something like that i don't even remember but it was definitely somewhere uh in the united kingdom i just wasn't i just don't remember now where i was but anyway um and i didn't have a pa at the time so i was doing my own emails and i remember i got off my one of my closest friends from canada I was on the phone to her and she's the only person, literally the only person, I actually cry to. Like, I could call her and be, like, crying and sobbing and she just listens to me and lets me rant. We, it's weird, like, I don't, I don't know, but I, I'm, I've never been able to do that with anyone, but with her, I do that. So I remember calling her and crying and, and just telling her that I feel really lonely and I feel like, you know, I would like to meet somebody, I would like to be in a relationship, but I don't think it's going to happen for me because it's been two years and nobody's, you know, 
is even approaching me, like, is something wrong with me, and na 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 you know, that kind of thing. And she just said to me, she listened to me, she let me cry, and then she was like, babe, when the time is right, it will happen for you. And you won't believe it, I got off that phone, and I was checking my emails, and then I see an email titled, this is my business email, an email titled, pancakes and waffles. And I was just thinking, huh? Did somebody like accidentally, like obviously you get bridal inquiries, right? Like inquiries about makeup. So when I saw that, I was like, okay. And I clicked on it and I read the email and it was just like this really nice email from this guy um, who basically, it, it seemed like a resume and he was just introducing himself and just like telling me what he does for a living and da 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 da. And he found out through one of my YouTube videos that I was single, um, one of my Q and A's and just thought he'll give it a shot and thought if I was interested in getting to know him. Bear in mind, I had no idea what this guy looked like. I was just like, he had already told me that he was in the States and I was just like, yeah, I don't think so. Like, I'm I'm in the UK, I'm happy in the UK. I'm like, this is just not gonna work out. So I genuinely didn't bother, but I did write him back because it was such a nice, decent, lovely email. So I did write him back saying, thank you so much for your lovely email, but unfortunately, you know, I'm good. <laughs> like, well, in a, in a nice way, of course. Um, and then a few days later, I got back to London and I had a few days off and I was just like a little bit bored. I went back to that email and I read that email again and I thought, I'm just curious. I want to know what this guy looks like. And he did leave me his number. And then I basically <laughs> uh, put his number in my WhatsApp just to see his WhatsApp profile picture. And he had like some mountain or something. So I was like, yeah, this is definitely catfish. Um, I'm just saying you what I thought at the time, okay? Doesn't mean that people who have mountains as their profile picture are bad people. But um, I was kind of just like, okay. So I messaged him and I was like, hey, this is Vithya. Uh, honestly, that's all I said. I was like, hey, this is Vithya. Can I be shallow and ask you for your picture? I went straight to it because I was like, I'm not wasting time. And... I remember his response was, well, I don't have any selfies, but I can go into the bathroom and take a picture, you know, with that lighting if you want. Because I think in the States at the time, it was like evening or early morning or something like that. The sun hadn't risen anyway. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. But um, so he goes and takes a picture and sends it to me. And I thought, damn, this guy's cute. And then I was like, uh, okay, we need to FaceTime because he could be sending me some random guy's picture, right? So then we facetimed and i liked him even more and then we were on the phone for like two weeks every single day we would facetime we would one sunday we were both off and the whole sunday we were literally on facetime for 10 hours okay we were just lying in bed and we were just talking and talking and talking and get, getting to know each other and i was like oh my god this guy's so cute then i told my mom about it i know you guys might not agree with this step but i went to my mom and i said I'm gonna get you his jadagam. I'm gonna get you his horoscopes. Can you go find a priest and check if we're compatible? So with Tamils or with the, um, well, in our community, we do this thing, n not always, and not everyone does it, but usually you kind of, you can check if you're compatible, okay? And it's like a thing, they check your birth, the, the timing of your birth. It's like very detailed and it really detailed tells you about your life. And so I told my mom to do that and his mom decided to do it as well because I was just like, well, we've gotten to know each other for two weeks, but I'm not, you know, I'm not ready to kind of like blindly trust somebody again. Like it was really important to me anyway. And both my mom and, and my mother-in-law now, uh, they both checked and we had a really good match and you won't believe it my mom comes into the room and she was just like um you basically got nine out of ten okay you guys are matched nine out of ten and i was just like oh my god and she goes that's almost unheard of like you know it's usually really good to be seven out of ten but nine out of ten is like crazy so when she was just like you got nine out of ten and then naturally i was like okay what's the one that we're not compatible in prosperity meaning children like we weren't gonna have children and obviously at the time i already knew that we weren't so i was kind of just like oh okay this is crazy accurate so 
anyway. Um, and then my mom was like, even though all that that is great and she very 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 believes in it because she did check for my ex-husband and I and we had four out of ten and apparently the priest said that we were a snake and a mouse or a snake and a rat or something and he was like don't let them get married but well anyway like I said not everybody believes in it it's not always you know true I guess I don't know but it was important to me I did it and I was happy that that was the result and I went ahead and met him so my mom was like you're gonna have to meet him and I was just like let's do a road trip in California so we did a two-week road trip I actually met him for the first time in my life at San Francisco airport so I flew all the way to San Francisco you won't believe it I nearly got on another flight to fly back because I was like what am I doing this guy could be a serial killer I mean I gave my parents a whole list of all the hospital, hospitals nearby, of all the addresses that we were going to stay, stay at, um, all the police stations, all the numbers and names, okay, and all the addresses where we were going to stay. And I said to my parents, if I don't call you back, or if you don't hear me <laughs> every few hours, you call these hospitals and these police stations. And, you know, my parents, I don't know why they were so chilled. I think they were so chilled. But my parents were never chilled, okay? My parents were very orthodox and very strict. I wasn't even allowed to speak to a guy. That's how, how strict my parents were when I was growing up. But I think because of the divorce and like what I went through mentally with the depression and everything, I think my parents just kind of felt like, you know what? We're just going to trust your intuition. We're going to trust your gut feeling and we're going to just trust your decision. You're old enough. You've been through so much. I'm pretty sure you're not going to be stupid and make another mistake again kind of thing. So I really appreciated that. My mom initially was just like, don't tell anyone, not even your father. But then I was like, yeah, but imagine I do. I do go missing. I want my dad to know, you know, and I want to have I want to have been able to say goodbye or something. I know I'm sounding so dramatic, but you know, you never know. So I don't know what possessed me, but because I've never done anything like this before. So anyway, I met him. It took me a few days to warm up to him. I was just analyzing, you know, the psychologist in me. I was kind of just like, hmm. And then, yeah, towards the end of that trip. So it was a two week trip, by the way, towards the end of that trip, I called my mom and I'm just like, I'm marrying this guy. And um, I mean, I'm just kind of condensing it because obviously I've talked so much this video is so long already but let's just say yeah it's you know we we had a great time came back and literally four months later we got married in New York um with one of my best friends from Canada the same one that I cried to saying that I feel lonely she was my maid of honor so can you imagine and she's still one of my best friends today um so she and her husband and the twins came down and they were like basically our witnesses and my maid of honor and we had a, such an amazing chilled uh registry and then my parents started calling us husband and wife anyway so we count that as as, as our anniversary but then because everyone in the family is hindu except me but everyone else is hindu i just kind of thought it would be nice to do a hindu wedding in malaysia so the following year we did uh a big wedding in uh, Malaysia with all the cousins and friends. We, I mean, I say big wedding. We only had 120 people, but for us, that was just like such a nice, intimate wedding. We didn't have a sit-down reception. We just had a party. We had a pool party. We had, we did so many fun things. And again, I didn't have that pressure because I already had the big wedding. Do you know what I mean? And then kind of this time around, my parents were like, do whatever. And we did. And now we've been married nearly seven years and things are great. I'm happy. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes if you are somebody who is going through a divorce or you're kind of like not sure about the future, whether you're going to meet somebody again, whether you're going to have a family or maybe you're divorced, but you already have children and you're worried about will somebody accept you with your children and stuff. Trust me. You never know, okay? You will never know that. Nobody can sit there and say to you, no, it's not going to happen for you. Absolutely nobody has that right and nobody will ever know. So I just feel like go put yourself out there, you know, don't hide in your house. Like put yourself out there in a way where go to work, you know, be open, talk to people. I just feel like, you know, the more you're so, like, the more you're healed and, you know, kind of invite that sort of positive energy, you will get that and you will get those kind of people around you and stuff. Like, my husband now 
is so different from any of the guys I've ever been attracted to or have ever dated. Okay, from, from every, from his looks to his personality to his taste, everything is completely different. And it's interesting because that's made me realize that the kind of guys that I used to be attracted to or have kind of gone for were never really good for me and they were very toxic relationships. And so I think that therapy did really help me kind of see my self-worth and kind of like really work on things. And I think that's why I attracted a completely different type of guy than I usually would, if that makes sense. And yeah, so I do feel like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, the divorce is hard. It's a hard, 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 hard face. You're grieving your marriage, you're grieving so many things. You're unsure, you doubt yourself, you're constantly worried about what people think. You doubt whether you've even made the right decision. There are so many things, okay, so many things involved with a divorce. But I'm telling you, if you are sure and you make that decision, stick to it and ride it out. Because I'm telling you, within 8 to 12 months, you'll be over it. Within 8 to 12 months, you'll have a new life. You'll be a new you. And the only way this will get, like, this whole process will get kind of, like, um, sped up is if you do actually go and see a therapist and speak to as many of your friends and cousins as possible openly, let it out. You know, you need to heal before you can even think about another relationship, of course. But I really pray that, you know, no matter what decision you make, that you are happy. And ultimately that's what's most important anyway. I hope you guys like this video. I'm really sorry that this video is like super long, but um, my hair is pretty much done. I'm gonna get ready now. But um, if you like this video, thank you, you know, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching this and give me feedback. And if you really like the story time, I'll do another story time for next week. Maybe ask me what my next story time should be.